alive. Love lifted me as we stand. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deep they stayed within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me now safe. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He, your savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. Brother Josh Spencer, step up here, Brother Josh. Pray with us, if you will. We're delighted to be back in church. I know you are. We. Didn't have church Sunday night, but we're glad to be back, have health and strength and desire to be here tonight. I want to go ahead and tell you that the good news about, uh, about Brother Wofford is that uh, in about three hours, the surgery was finished, and uh, as of a little while ago, speaking to his wife, everything's going really good. So we praise the Lord for that and give God the glory, all right? So thank you for praying for him, and we'll say more about these others in just a moment. Let's have prayer, and then we'll remain standing. We'll do another good hymn of the faith. Then we'll shake hands in fellowship. All right, Brother Josh, if you'll pray with us. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and thank you. We thank you for allowing us to be back this midweek. And, Lord, we appreciate this place even more, Lord, when we're not able to be here, Lord. And, it, Lord, it's just such a special place in our heart. And I pray, God, you'd help us, Lord, to bring in the wonderings of our mind tonight. I pray, God, you'd help us, Lord, just to focus and concentrate a little bit on you. Lord, I pray, God, you'd help us to learn to be doers of the word and not hears only, Lord. And I pray, uh, Lord, you touch the pastor as he preaches. I pray, God, you'd touch him, illuminate him, help him to say exactly what you'd have him to say. Lord, we also thank you for the good report, Brother Rick Walford. I pray, God, you continue to touch him. Lord, all these others that are sick, Lord, that need a touch from you, I pray, God, you continue to touch them. Yeah. Brother Ken Robbins and, and some of the others, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we love you and thank you. We ask you all these things in thy precious name. Amen. Amen. Page 354, leaning on the everlasting wall. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. on the red, okay? This is Caden Smith, and I got a text the other night, and he's eight years old, and I'd like for him to tell this audience the greatest, most wonderful, most glorious uh, transaction that could ever happen to anybody on planet Earth, all right? And Caden, what happened to you the other night? I got saved. Amen. God bless you. So 
So your, your, your mom and daddy both helped you, or your daddy, your mama, who helped you? Oh, bless your heart, all by himself, that's great. I like the way he just said that. Nobody don't need no mom and dad when it comes to that, amen. Thank God. We're going to let him stand right down here. We're going to shake hands, and, and of course not the whole church, but a lot of the young people can come, shake his hand. I want you to cross the aisle, tell somebody love him. We've got an excellent crowd tonight, great crowd. We've got some singers lined up. We'll have some singing in a minute and maybe some preaching. But right now, let's shake this young man's hand and one another's hand, all right? God bless you. Thank you. Y'all come shake this young man's hand, all right? Everybody's looking this way. What an excellent crowd. I want you to look around. Take a moment, look around. Uh, probably, well, if I'm looking. There might be one pew that's empty, but everybody else is on a pew. We praise the Lord for the great crowd, great congregation that turns out in the middle of the week. I'm, I'd be pitiful sight to come here and wouldn't have nobody to preach to, but we appreciate you coming to church. We really do. And again, thank the Lord for saving this young man. Brother Jonathan was in the pulpit. His mother Heather was in the altar, and he and Caden came and got saved right down there, up there at Providence Road Baptist Church. So God can save anywhere, amen. Thank the Lord for it. Let me congratulate Adam and Bethany. They're home with the baby. They went home just a little while ago. Little Berkeley Sage, she was six pounds and eight ounces. And uh, so they just got home late this afternoon. Pray for them. And I'm sure they'll be back, Lord willing, Sunday, Lord willing. But uh, congratulations to Adam and Bethany. 
and seven granddaughters for my wife and I, and we're still going to print up some surrogate mother applications for a boy, all right? I'd sure like to have a grandson <laughs> one of these days. But anyway, praise the Lord for healthy children, all right? Young people, this, sa this Saturday at 6.30, 6.30, there's a youth activity. Contact Nathan and Ashley for any questions or details. Keep that in mind. And I would like for everybody to keep in mind the Thanksgiving week, we're moving the Wednesday night service to Tuesday night. If you'll keep that in mind. Also continue to give in the Venezuela Clothes Project. We've moved everything to the power room right now because it's such a large, uh, large participation, large amount of giving, and we thank you for that. But uh, it's not shut off yet. We want you to still give. There's plenty of room to put it back there in those totes, all right? And then this Friday night, uh, I think, I guess it's the second major home game will be at uh, Mountain View Christian Academy. I'm not sure what all teams are playing, but uh, they're playing Bob Jones Academy, all right? So if you'd like to turn out for the uh, basketball activities this Friday evening, Friday night, you're more than welcome. I'm sure concessions will be going. And uh, so uh, come support the team. That would be great. And a large, large, about as large crowd as I've ever seen last night as far as vehicles. Vehicles were everywhere. So what a large turnout. If you'd like to come Friday, you can come. And I'm about 5 o'clock, Brother Kevin, 5, 5, 4, starts at 4. All right, 4 o'clock starts at 4, all right? Y'all ready? Come on, sing for us. Appreciate Andrew and Mary Beth. They're going to give us a number and song, all right? God bless you. Come right ahead. Check one. Thankful for the promise of heaven this evening. I want to say we miss everybody. When we're gone, we're, uh, Lord's opened a lot of doors for us. Is, is it all right if I tell time to? Sure. I'll have, this year, uh, by the time the year's over with, I think we'll have about 80, 80 meetings we've been a part of this year, bookings and Lord's opened up a lot of doors. We've been we busy, but we do miss you all. And we I text pastors as often as I can and let you let you know that we appreciate your prayers and we pray for you all. And but I'll we'll sing about heaven this evening. You, you say amen to that? Appreciate it very, very much. Grand old song. Take your Bibles, please. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. That's where we were Sunday morning. I'm not going to re-preach that, but I want to start there. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, I am excited about being able to preach tonight. And I cover your prayers as we stand before you with God's holy word, a weighty responsibility to feed this congregation, be a blessing to this congregation. I hope you've come tonight with a, a, a portion of an appetite for God's word. I really do. hope you've come with an appetite. So again, thank you for coming to church. It means a lot. I appreciate you coming. May God bless each and every one of you. And don't let me forget, Brother Spencer, let me forget, holler at me. You know, I'm serious. At the end, I want to show you this, share this prayer list of several others and two or three more in the hospital and uh, some surgeries coming up. We'll share that at the end of service. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and if you'll remember, we started in verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. If you'll remember, and uh, Brother Iverson, you, got, you take good notes, by the way. I know that from your devotionals. But if you remember, and by the way, if you don't get them, you should get them. They're a blessing. We read them every morning. I'm serious. Read them every morning. Thank you for doing that. But uh, in, in the message Sunday morning, uh, the qualities of a good soldier, number one, is the fortitude to stand. Endure hardness. And then the freedom to serve. Don't be entangled with the affairs of this life. And then, Brother Randy, the faithfulness to his superior. And I got that out of verse number four, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And I want to preach tonight, nothing to do with this message, by the way. I want to read the scripture, though. I want to preach on pleasing the Lord, all right? Pleasing the Lord. I want you to take your Bible and I want you to go to John chapter number 8, all right? John chapter number 8. Let me show you another verse that corresponds with this text that I've already read. John chapter 8. Quickly now, go to verse number 29. That sounds good, by the way, guys. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if that could be said about all of our lives? I do always those things that please him. Take your Bibles and go to Romans chapter 15, everybody. Another corresponding passage of scripture that we think is pertinent and needs to be read. Romans chapter 15, quickly go there. Look in verse number one. If you're there, say amen. Verse one, all right. We then, Romans 15, one, we then that are strong, ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Is that what your Bible said? Not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Now you're looking this way. Let me give you an introduction, all right? Here's the introduction, all right? I think we can live as so to please ourselves. It's possible to live that way. I, I know a lot of people that are living that way. That is a sad commentary for a New Testament child of God, to live to please yourself. In other words, it's all about them. It's all about their agenda, all about their plans, all about their family, all about what they want to do or what they want in life. But I want to tell you, neighbor, that is not the right way to live. Absolutely not the right way to live. And can I tell you this? And I got to hurry. That selfishness and that self-centeredness, uh, it'd be a happy day in all of our lives when we find out that it's not about you and I. Amen. It's not about you and I. So, Brother Cam, I think that people can live to please self. Then number two, this introduction, I think, Brother Ben, people can live a life to please their social circles, all right? Their social circles. In other words, and I'm not going to be mean, but I will tell you the truth tonight, some people can't do anything without their friend's approval. Or they don't want to do anything unless they get the nod of their little social, social gathering. Or, you know, I don't want to go against my friends. I, I don't want to upset my friends. I, I don't want to be different. I don't want to be, I, I don't want to be an oddball. I don't want to be a fifth wheel. Whatever got wrong with that, friend? Where, where is it in the Bible that you're supposed to live to please your social circle. Hey, they're going to come a time, they're going to come a time 
that if you please God, I promise you, you will not please everybody else. You will not. So I'm, I'm try, trying to give an introduction tonight. Brother Alex, I believe it's possible to live a life as a child of God, Brother Randy, where we simply please ourselves. And then secondly, Brother Ben, it's possible that we please the social circle. And then, God forbid this one right here, Brother Stoller, this is a terrible way to live, and that's to please society. Yeah. I got news for you. You'll not please society. And if you please society, then I'm going to say to you tonight that you're a friend of this world. You are a friend of this world, and you're committing spiritual adultery and spiritual fornication because of your affinity and your affection for the world. They're not my measuring rod. They're not my measuring book. They're not my measuring stick. Somebody needs to help me tonight. I'm not supposed to try to live my life to please society. As a matter of fact, if you stand as an old-time Christian that believes that Bible right there and believes in morality and believes in righteousness and believes in holiness and believes in some standards, I want to tell you tonight, you're not going to please society. And it'll be a happy day when you quit trying. Just quit trying. You see what I'm preaching tonight? I'm not supposed to please self. I'm not supposed to please my social circle. And I'm not supposed to please society. I'm supposed to be pleasing a sovereign God. Amen. Is everybody all right with that? I'm supposed to be. Now, it's going to get quiet on this next one, all right? It's going to get real quiet. Real, real quiet. And a lot of you are not going to even understand me. You're not going to understand me. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to understand me. But some people live solely to please their spouse. I knew it would get quiet. I knew it would. He said, well, I thought we were supposed to. We are. We are. But uh, could I tell you this? I believe when spouse, when spouse goes against God and goes against the Bible, and goes against holy living, and goes against Christianity. I don't know how you feel about it, but somebody needs to draw the line. Say, well, if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Well, mama just going to have to not be happy. I'm not supposed to please mama. I knew it'd get quiet. I'm not supposed to keep mama happy all the time. I'm not supposed to please my spouse ahead of my God. My spouse didn't save me. My spouse didn't give me salvation. My spouse didn't give me eternal life. But the God of the universe is the one that saved me. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a time when I please the Lord and it may not please my wife. Now, I told you ahead of time, I prefaced the statement. I prefaced the statement. I told you. Some of you are not going to understand it. When it comes to righteousness, and it comes to holiness, and it comes to godly living, and it comes to biblical Christianity, now hold on. Am I supposed to keep her happy, or am I supposed to keep him happy? You say, but what if she's not happy? What if she's not happy? Well, if I'm making him happy, I knew he'd get quiet. If I'm making him happy, guess what? She just has to get happy. I'm not picking on you women. I'm not picking on you. But I'm not going to dodge the issue either. Am I all right? You say, you don't have no Bible for that. Well, what about when, uh, when some of the apostles said, we ought to obey God rather than man. It's, it's like this. It's like this. Your husband, he backslides. That's what I said. Your husband, he backslides. He said, come on, let's go on down here to the dance. Let's go on down here to the dance. You as a Christian wife, you as a Christian wife, and I, I, may, be, I may be standing up here all by myself tonight. As a Christian wife, you need to tell him, I'm sorry, I don't dance. A praying knee and a dancing foot don't grow on the same leg. That's exactly right. Amen. Talk to me. Okay, talk to me. Talk to me. Is the wife supposed to just say, throw up her hands? Say, okay, let's go dance. No, I don't think so. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Everybody okay? 
Everybody listen, you didn't get preached to Sunday night, so we got to double up tonight. I love her. You love yours. Somebody help me, that got quiet. I got a sure and a that's right. Nobody else had a doggone word. Y'all sorry as dirt. You're going to pay for it when you get home tonight. Some of you got the couch tonight. You got the couch. It's all right. It's like camping. Just get you some cookies, all right? <laughs> you listening? I love her. But my complete allegiance and my complete to total, total affection. My none, and I, if y'all want to crack me afterwards, do it, but don't do it while I'm preaching. I can take it later. Don't do it out loud right now. But my number one priority is not to please her. It's to please him. Somebody help me. It's to please him. I've got to please him. Oh, you got my, you get my introduction tonight? I don't want to please myself. Because where's, by the way, by the way, where's that get you? Where's that get you? I'll tell you where it gets you. It gets you in a mess. I want to tell you, you live to please yourself, you're going to get in a mess. You're going to, you're, you're going to be self-centered all your life. Are you listening? And then, then why, who in the world would want to live to please their social circle? Hey, you got, I got news for you. They may be your friend, but you can't keep them happy. Because if you please them on one issue, they're going to want you to please them on another issue. And I got news for you. Yeah. Who needs friends like that? My friends are not supposed to dictate how my, my Christian life goes. They're there to help me. They're there to encourage me. They're there to be my friend. They're there to fellowship. But they can't dictate my, my desire to live for the Lord Jesus Christ and honor him in my life. And if I honor him in my life, if my friends don't understand it, it's so be it, amen. You're not supposed to please your social circle. We're definitely not supposed to please society. Some of you need to give up trying. I think you young people face that. I think you young people face that. I want to be accepted. I want to be accepted. I want to be liked. I want to be cool. I want to be cool. I want to tell you something. Show me the word cool in that Bible. Show me cool in that Bible. Is it in there? Dr. Love, is it in there? I don't think I've ever read it. I don't think I've ever read it. If it's in there, somebody show me after church. God didn't call you young people to be cool. God didn't call you young people to fit in. God didn't call you young people to be accepted by everybody. If your ways please God, what does it matter what society says? And to the misunderstanding of a one or two, to the misunderstanding of one or two, I'm not supposed to live preeminently to please my spouse. I just want to tell some of you something. When it comes to rearing children, and raising a family, and being faithful to God's house, let, 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 let's, let's, let, let's take this matter that's so touchy with some. Let's take this matter of tithing. I didn't say tithe. I said tithing. Okay, so, so we're supposed to tithe. Well, you want to kill a message, go ahead and do that. Let's try, let's try that again. We're supposed to tithe. Amen. Every week. We're supposed to tithe. And I'll tell you this, if you send your child tuition free, the least you could do is tithe. My Lord, what a scallywag and a scoundrel. What a scallywag and a scoundrel. Send your child to a Christian school and can't even help us. That's, that's not right. It's not right. But suppose I believe in my heart as a husband that I'm supposed to tithe every week because God sure has been good to me. What if she bucked up and reared up and said, we can't do that. We can't do that. We got medical bill. We got a light bill. We got a new car. We got a vacation home. We got, we got this. We got new shoes. We got, we got a new dress. We got a new suit. You got a new rod and reel. You got a new shotgun. I need to say, get thee behind me, woman. Be quiet. Be quiet. I need to tell her, stand down. I knew it'd get quiet. Stand down. I'm not going to please her. God said tithe. God said tithe. 
Now, I don't have time to preach all that tonight, but it's in there, isn't it? Isn't it in there? Old and New Testament, right? Both Testaments. I believe I could find it in the, in the, in the index in the back. I believe I could, Brother Mark. And, and I know this happens. I know it happens. I know it happens. This is on tape. I'm sorry, Mom. But she won't look at it. She can't even get her computer to work half the time. She told me one time, she said, Stephen, I was about 18. She said, you need to quit giving your money to that church. That's what she told me. She said, don't. I won't send it to her. I don't want to hurt her. I love her. She's my mother. I love her. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing her on the bus. She said, Stephen, you need to quit giving your money to that church. I didn't quit. I didn't quit. I kept giving at least 10% to the church. And my mother come up with this chimney corner scripture. What's chimney corner scripture? It's not in the Bible, but they think they know the Bible. Here's what she said. She said, Stephen, charity starts at home. I wanted to say, Where, what chapter and verse is that? I'm into charity in 1 Corinthians 13, Mom, I'll have you. But what chapter? But I didn't get smart. I didn't want to get my teeth knocked out, number one. You don't, you don't talk back to your mother, amen. I said you don't talk back to your mother. You got that? Some of you bowed your head on that. We're not praying. The doctor kid said, look up here, we're not praying yet. We're not dismissing. You don't talk back to your mother. And if you keep talking back to your mother, you need discipline. You need correction. You need a whooping, not a whipping, a whooping. You can, somebody needs to stop you. Somebody needs to stop that sassy mouth. But I didn't talk back to her, but I didn't stop tithing either. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to please my mom. I was trying to please God. That's one issue. That's one issue. What's it like around your house? We're going to church Wednesday night. We go to church every Wednesday night. Well, me and the kids aren't going. What? What? We're not going. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Sir, you don't give in to her. You don't give in to her. You're supposed to please God. The husband comes in and said, I ain't going. It, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth going to church. On I don't get nothing out of it. Well, probably because you hadn't put nothing in it. You only get something out of something if you put something in it. Y'all okay tonight? Y'all okay? You don't, don't, don't leave and say, I don't get nothing out of it. Well, your, your attitude probably needs adjusting. Hey, Amen. I've enjoyed already being here. I'm about in the third finish, and I'm still having a good time. But your husband comes in, he said, I'm not going. I ain't getting nothing out of it, same old stuff. He's going to preach on that again. He's going to nail high, and he's going to try to encourage, talk about the valleys and the trials. Uh, you, you know what? You, you'll be appreciative about them valleys and trials message when you get in one. You sure will. You sure will. Hey, you'll need, you'll, you'll need that stuff. Yeah, you may not need it now, but you'll need it down the road. I'm telling you, you'll need it now. I know what I'm talking about. You may not need it now, but you give it six months, you're going to need some of that down the road. That's why I preach on it. I'm trying to help the people of God. Dr. Love, I'm trying to build them up. I'm trying to encourage. Hey, I'm trying to show some liquid love. Amen. But you come home, your husband says, ah, oh, ain't no sense in it. There ain't no sense in it. We're only there an hour. You ought to thank God for that. And by the way, I let you all out at 8.30, and some of you stayed at 9.15. I ain't figured you out yet. But that's fine. I want you to fellowship. That's good. That's okay. But you come in, your husband said, I ain't going. So you're supposed to let him pull you down like that? You're supposed to give in to and say, well, if you're not going, I'm not going. No, you need to get them little kids' britches on, brush them little lamb chops, comb that hair, get you a TV dinner, shove it down your throat, get you a glass of tea on the way out the door, and say, if you want to sit there on the couch, more power to you, we're going to church. We're going to church. You know, if some women would do that, it might get some husbands under conviction. Here's what I'm preaching tonight. Jesus didn't please himself. Paul didn't please himself. A good soldier doesn't please himself. You know why who a soldier pleases? He, he pleases his superior. He pleases commanding officer. 
It would be a happy day in all of our life, all of our life, when we make up our mind. Miss Jimenez, when we make up our mind, and I'm going to say it like my pastor used to say it, come hell or high water, live, die, sink or swim, I'm throwing my all in with God, and no matter who understands or misunderstands, no matter who quits or who keeps going, I'm going to live my life to please my heavenly Father. He's still the best thing that ever happened to me. He's still the dearest friend I've ever had. He's worth serving. He's worth loving. I want to give him my life. I want to live for him, not just on Sunday. I want to live for him on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Make up our mind tonight. We're not going to please self. We're not going to please our social circle. We're not going to please society. And we're not necessarily always going to please our spouse. We're going to please the Lord. Amen. We're going to please the Lord. You know, it's a sad day. It's a sad, I'm going to, I'm going to meddle a little bit. It's a sad day when the Holy Spirit convicts people of some things in their life and they feel like the Holy Ghost has indicted them on a matter and they want to deal with it on a personal level and they want to either give it up or surrender it or, or go forward with God and their spouse steps in and says, that's not that important. You don't need to do that. Or they say, don't take it that far. Don't take it that far. Have you lost your mind? That's what's wrong with us now. We haven't taken it far enough. I don't know who I'm talking tonight, but don't talk your husband out of sacrifice for the Lord. Don't talk, don't talk your wife out of something she wants to do for Jesus Christ. If it's for him, that's the motivation we're looking for. I believe, Brother Ben, that's the motivation God's looking for. It's a sad commentary for a Christian home and a Christian family for the Holy Ghost to convict somebody and the people of that household talk them out of it. Don't let that happen. How about you teenagers? How about you teenagers? Mom and dad... God's been dealing with me. I'd sure like to hear somebody say that. I'd sure like to hear somebody say that. God's been dealing with me about some of my music. I just want to tell you, I'm getting rid of everything that's not godly, everything that's not holy, everything that's not Christ-honored, everything that's not edified. I'm cleaning up my iPad. I'm cleaning up my earbuds. I'm cleaning up my telephone. I'm cleaning up iTunes. I'm cleaning up my, my CD collection. I'm, cle I'm cleaning up my radio frequency. It's a sad, sad commentary for a mom and dad to say, oh, son, that's not all that important. Oh, yes, it is important. If we had more parents, if we had more parents back up, reinforce, and support the working of the Holy Ghost in their child's life, we might see a difference in this generation. You listen? Who are you living for? Who am I living for? I mean, really think about it. Think about it. Brother Ben, do I live my life to please this congregation? Do I live my life to please the Lord? Are, are you doing everything you do to keep everybody around you happy? Listen close now. Listen close. Are you doing everything you do to keep everybody around you happy? Can I tell you something? That's a grind. Yeah. Can I tell you something else? That gets real old. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Y'all not listening, are you? Yeah. I mean, a lot of you are. Can I tell you something else? That's the wrong motivation. That's right, sir. That's right. And you know what? That'll burn at the judgment seat. Right. That'll burn at the judgment seat. Right. Right. Well, I do what the way I do I, the way I do because the church I go to or the school I go to or because of who my parents are because. Because I go to this church. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's all wrong. That's all wrong. If you're doing it only because the church you go to or because, because what school you go to or what Sunday school class you're in, listen, young people, it's all wrong. You're pleasing the wrong people. We're supposed to please the Lord. 
I found out, I found that, listen, I'm going to give you a verse right here. I'm going to give you a verse, and I think I'll get a resounding chorus of amen. I don't need them, but I think I'll get one. You know what the Bible said? Let me tell you what the Bible said. His commandments are not grievous. My yoke is easy, easy and my burden is light. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, and, and you shall find rest under your souls. There's the rest of salvation, Brother Ben, and there's the rest of sanctification. I am, I am, I am, I am deeply, I am deeply afraid. I am deeply afraid that many of God's people are living their lives to please everybody else except God. That'll play out, friend, and that'll get old. That'll, listen to me. Listen to this. It'll wear you down. It'll wear you down. And I'll tell you what else it is. And, and some of you lost your smile. You've lost your smile. Yeah. Huh? That's right. You've lost your smile. Your joy is gone. Your joy is tanked. It's tanked. Right. I mean, it's in the cellar. It's in the cellar. You know what I think? I'm going to tell you what I think. I think many times we get all this stuff all messed up, Brother Trey, and we're living to please everybody around us. Which, and you know what we found out? We can't please them. We can't please them. No matter what we do, Cole, we can't please them. So you know what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be pleasing him. Pleasing him. And I'll tell you what he does. He brings joy, doesn't he? He brings peace. Somebody help me. Brother Cam, he brings contentment. I mean, you know, listen, you can lay down and sleep at night. I said, you can lay down and sleep at night. Hey, you know what else? You can come to church and worship. You can come to church and worship. You can enjoy God, enjoy church. You can enjoy your Christian life. If you Listen, now, I'll give it to you again. Don't please yourself. Don't please your social circle. Don't please society. And, and, and this, this can be misconstrued, but don't live to please only your spouse. Don't live to please only your spouse. As soon as we get in the car, as soon as we get in the car, I mean, soon, well, as soon as we all get in our cars, as soon as we all get in our cars, here, let me tell you what's going to happen. Some husband's going to look over to his wife and say, that last point, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He's just preaching. Don't worry about it. Your number one allegiance is to me. You didn't listen. It, I'm not going to sit by you because the chandelier is going to fall on your head. I'm telling you there are times when what you do and how you live may not please your spouse. It may not please your spouse. I say, Brother Brian, the sovereign God comes before our spouse. Sovereign God. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, everybody. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, quickly. Well, I left my watch somewhere, probably over there. Might be a good thing. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 5, look at it. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see dead and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, watch this. This is before his rapture, his, his being taken away. For before his translation... He had this testimony. What's your testimony? That he what? He say somebody say he did what? He pleased God. He pleased God. What? What? A, what? Hey, come on! Look, hey! 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 Is there any more enviable testimony on Enoch's tombstone? It didn't say rest in peace. It didn't say here today, gone tomorrow, which wouldn't have been a bad one. Here today, gone tomorrow on Enoch's tombstone. You know what it said? He pleased God. He pleased God. My, my. Help us, Lord. Help the husbands. Help the wives. Help the young people. Help the church officers. Help the pastor. 
before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Look at verse 6, everybody. Look at verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Turn the page, everybody. Turn the page. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm just going to give you some scripture and let you go in a minute. Hebrews chapter 13. Go with me now quickly. Stay with me. Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, that means share what you have. Forget not, watch it. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Did you know in Hebrews 11, people can please God? People can please God. Would you like to be an Enoch? When we have your funeral, and if Jesus don't come, we're going to have everybody, including mine. If Jesus doesn't come, and let's say in the next 50 years, we're going to have a whole lot more funerals. But wouldn't you like your children and your grandchildren and the preacher, the minister, the other minister, the singers, wouldn't they like to be able to have to be able to say about you, I tell you, he or she pleased God. They pleased God. You can't buy that. You, Rebecca, you can't put a price tag on that. Hey, if you're pleasing God, I'm finishing almost. If you're pleasing God, if you're pleasing God, you are a spiritually wealthy individual. You're a blessed individual. You can sleep at night. You can enjoy your salvation. You can smile and look the world in the face and thank God for saving you out of hell because you're pleasing God. Do you know that people can please God? Did you know that praise pleases God? Pray, that's a whole other message, Laura. Praise pleases God. The fruit of our lips, it pleases God. And then providing for others, providing for others pleases God. That's verse 16. But to do good, verse 16, to communicate, forget not. That word communicate is to share what you have with others. It is a, those that distribute, those that give a contribution, and those that share. God has blessed you abundantly. He's blessed you abundantly. And you know what God is pleased with? When you provide for others. I look at you tonight. I look at you and say to this audience, people can please God. I say to this audience that praise pleases God and provisions for others that pleases God. That pleases God. How are you doing tonight? How are we doing? How are we all doing? What do we want to do? How do we really want to live? What, what do we really want to be remembered? Come on, Lauren. What, Tiffany? What do we really want to be remembered for? Think about it. Brother Jeffrey, what do we really want to be remembered for? My car? <laughs> my truck? <laughs> my clothes? My personality? <laughs> That's a big negative. My wardrobe? That's a big negative. My house? That's a negative. What do we really want to be remembered for? When, 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 when it's all done, Brother John, when it's all finished and our life's tale is told, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing, Brother Perry, if people could think in their mind and know in their mind, you know what? He pleased God. She pleased God. Their life was pleasing to God. God challenge us tonight. God help us tonight. I'm so afraid, Brother Randy, that so many, so many are checking the weather. I do this about my friends. I do this about my family. I do this for the people I go to church with. I do this, but you know that school crowd. Oh Lord, that school crowd. You're checking the weather too often. 
Why don't you quit living that way? Why don't you quit living that way? Make up your mind, you know what? I'm going to please God. That's all that matters. Brother Ben, come pray with us. Brother Ben, let's stand. Pray with us, Ben. Let's, let's stand. Let's get a song. Help us, Lord. Help us. Lord, we love you this evening. We thank you for the preaching of God's word. We thank you for the conviction that comes along with it. God, we ask you, Lord, you'd please keep that as an ever reminder, Lord, in our mind. Lord, something that we can always look forward to. God, that we'd be pleasing unto you. Ask God, God granted. God pleasing. granted. Lord, not only with our lives, Lord, but with our words, with our thoughts, with our actions. I ask you, God, you continue, Lord, to realize, Lord, that we need to please you more in these last days. God, realizing that people are watching us. I ask you, God, you'd forgive, help us to divorce ourselves from the opinions of those around us. God, divorce ourselves from the opinion of those that are that are not do what we got to do. And I ask you, God, please, that you'd help us to what find we have to do. resting and looking towards you and trying to make you happy. God, would you please, Lord, help us to live God, more help life. our church. Help our God, church, Lord. Our minds, Lord help the teenagers. I ask you, God, you'd give us backbone and boldness and courage. God, to stand and walk after you and follow hard after you. God, and diligently seek you. We ask these things in the blood of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing a song, all right? Sing Thanks, it.